Hello everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, today we are going to have a tutorial session that's going to talk about Cruise Operations Center and uh, discovery of devices. Um, if you're familiar with the software, um, it may formerly have been known as OMNM. This was in version um, prior to 8.0, but after 8.0 uh, the name has changed to Cruise OC. It is the same software, same support, same affiliation with Dell in terms of support of the software. Um, as I mentioned today, we're going to talk about discovery. Generally, it is recommended to use discovery profiles to kick off your discovery. A profile is simply found on the Resources tab under the Discover setting. And under that tab, you're going to see Discover Profiles and Authentications. To initiate a discovery, you simply right-click on any row and say New. Uh, you'll probably only see one line in your in environment. Um, and so simply select New and provide a, a, a meaningful name for your profile description. I'm going to call this My Profile. There's a variety of discovery options uh, that can be entered here. You're going to put a description on here. Uh, you can also set other options for this profile regarding how the name is persisted once it's saved. The default is using the sysname plus IP, but you can select here if you're using hostname or other uh, conventions. If you want to manage it by hostname, if you have a name server, a DNS server, then you can simply select hostname here and it will resolve hostnames and manage it by that hostname. Um, if you don't want to resolve host names, you can simply uncheck the checkbox or um, if you, some devices don't respond to pinging, so you may want to uncheck this pinging here if it will still respond to the standard uh, support protocols like SNMP and CLI, but you can't ping it for some reason, maybe it's blocked or maybe it's just uh, disabled, to simply uncheck that and you can still go about your discovery. Over on the filtering options here, if you want to uh, filter your range of devices, you may be scanning a subnet, you may be scanning a range of IPs. If you want to filter by an SNMP syslocation that is set on those devices, simply come in here and select uh, um, uh, those locations and uh, it will filter based on that type of location. So you would have to go to the location manager under settings and, and set this location so that you could select it here. You can also filter by vendor if you want to pick up maybe only your, your Dell devices within a subnet. You would simply select that button and select the vendor and it would exclude others. Um, on this configure SNMP, this is an advanced option. And by clicking this, what it will do is uh, automatically try to configure the devices for SNMP, meaning enabling SNMP server um, and setting the SNMP credential. Generally, you do not, you not need to use this unless you have no SNMP configured on any of your targets and uh, this will actually try to configure that as I mentioned but only for these specific devices so generally we can leave that unchecked if you want to filter a range of IPs or, or a subnet by uh, the device type simply select the device type in here and th only those devices will be picked up and discovered in some cases you may want to manage devices that have no other protocols they're just as ICMP meaning they only respond to ping and no other protocols but you still want to have them in inventory simply select this box and uh, those devices that are can only be accessible through ping will be persisted as a saved device and then finally here on the manage unclassified devices at times we'll encounter devices that uh, are n are not of a known driver or type that we know. We can still discover them and talk th to them through SNMP, but we don't have a way to classify them. This may be something like a an oddball UPS, uh, some oddball, uh, just some sensor maybe, um, but it's not classified in here, but it does have SNMP connectivity. If you want to manage those kind of devices, simply select classified un uh, manage unclassified devices. Generally, you don't have to change any settings in this Section 2 area. For a basic initial testing and discovery, I would recommend you don't don't reset anything in in section two here on the network tab is where we're going to identify what we want to discover in terms of the the IP address so you can simply come in here and do a CIDR address you can uh, this is similar to a subnet a host name an IP address IPv6 address or even a subnet so if you if you hover over the um, entry field you'll notice here there are various formats here you can do a range of IPs uh, via comma separation or with a dash or even with a slash 24 similarly when you go to a subnet it's going to ask you more, more specifically about the IP address and the mask that you want to use IP, IPv6 is generally one IP address at a time um, and at the end of this, I'll show you how you can discover by a list of IPs. If you want to just put these on a list of, uh, into a, like a notepad, for example, or a text file, and uh, call that list um, from your discovery profile. 
So we're, today we're just going to do a simple IP address discovery. I'm going to type in my target that I want to discover. And generally there are two protocols needed for most devices, most network devices. That's an SNMP and a CLI. There are other types of devices. There are, for example, iDRAC. Uh, you would, in that case, we would have a different sort of protocol we would add here called a Redfish uh, um, authentication. For a Windows server, it would be using a WMI protocol. Uh, to add any of these management auth uh, authentications and credentials, simply either um, select Create New, or as you'll notice in the background here, we have the authentication portlet. If you pre-stage your authentications in here, um, they'll be ready for you to select by using Choose Existing. Today I'm just going to create a new one. So I'm going to call this my uh, my demo one. And today we're going to use um, SSH as our protocol for the CLI that we're going to need for this device or my, our range of devices. And I'm simply going to type in the user ID, the password. I'm going to type in uh, enable here because this is generally the enable ID. So you can set this to enable for all of your discovery profiles unless you've explicitly changed the enable ID. And then you want to type the enable password. And then simply apply that. Now before I do that I just want to show you the range of other, other uh, protocols in here. So if I'm discovering for example a, uh, an iDRAC we would use something like Redfish and we would provide those credentials. If I'm doing V3 I would simply select that and there will be a different uh, field that you'll be entering for your V3 credentials. Similarly for a Linux box you might use WebM. Uh, other uh, REST interfaces may use a web HTTPS and for Windows servers it's going to use something like WMI. Simply select that and add the appropriate credentials and, uh, and you're good to go here. So I'm going I'm to go and apply this. Sometimes you might have slow devices. You may want to come to the management side here and adjust the timeout for the, uh, how long it takes for it to uh, log in um, or how many retries it's going to do or maybe you have a specific port. You can set all of that here if you need to. Generally the defaults are fine. Just click apply and save. The next thing we need is an SNMP credential. Simply create new. I'm going to call this my demo SNMP. I'm going to pick my V2 credential here. And in my case, um, I have a simple community string here. I'm, uh, generally, all you need is a read community. But uh, for simplicity here, you can put the same value in for all of these values here. And then similarly, you'll have management interface parameters that you can adjust if you need to. Simply apply that. Now note you may have many devices in here, a range of IPs, an entire subnet. You can add multiple SNMP v2, multiple SSH, other protocols, WMI, Redfish, whatever you need here uh, to, to, uh, to uh, scan those, uh, test against those devices, but be aware that each one of those protocols will be tried against each of those targets until it finds ones that, ones that work. And so it could extend the time it takes to discover. So knowing and targeting your profiles to specific devices with specific credentials will uh, be more efficient for you. The general process here is uh, the uh, discovery process will go out and first check SNMP v2. In that case, it will identify through an RFC 1213 object called SysObjectID what the device is in terms of the vendor. Is it a Cisco? Is it a Dell? Is it a Juniper? And then it'll even identify the model. That allows us to then pass the discovery process off to our driver that can do more for thorough inter interrogation of the device. And then the CLI uh, credential here is generally not used. Um, unless we get to the uh, point of doing uh, backup, restore, and deploy, or those command line kind of op options. Generally, it's not used during the discovery process. And that's not true in all cases, but generally that is the case. So once we've identified all of our login credentials, um, our SNMP and our CLI, and whatever else we need, we can then go over to our actions uh, area here. Now this is a set of actions that run. These are just scripts that run after a device is discovered. And it's going to do various things like resync the device, do some da network data collection, discover links, a variety of things here. Generally these are all appropriate uh, and, you, and you don't generally have to come in here. The one caveat here is you'll see opt-in for Dell EMC support assist and uh, call Dell EMC server to retrieve warranty information. If you're discovering non-Dell devices, I would just simply say remove these. Click the trash can icon, the gray icon, to remove those. Um, it's, it will simply fail at discovery time. It may give you a, a false impression of the discovery process. Um, but if you, uh, I'll show you here in a minute that you can uh, see those errors and interrogate them. But um, if you don't need them, you can simply just trash them over here with that little icon here. 
And then on the next tab here, what we want to do is do an inspection. And this is going to test our credentials to see that they're actually valid. Now, this could be time consuming if you have a lot of credentials. So again, try to be focused when you put your credentials into your profiles. Um, but you simply come over here and click a Start Inspection. And you'll notice here it uh, immediately says Ready to Discover. Um, and so that's uh, typically what you get. It's usually very quick here. It will, you'll see at the bottom here, you'll see it, that it pings first, it checks the host name, and then it, it makes sure the auths are correct. Um, you'll, you'll see indicators of errors here, or potential errors, with this little yellow icon here with the exclamation. You can simply click the yellow plus sign here to interrogate any issues here. So this isn't really saying there's an error, it's just giving you success here, success or failure. And so you're seeing that these were both successful for both SNMP and SSH. You want to see this in general for all of your devices. At times you may discover with only SNMP, and if you don't check this, uh, typically, you would get a, a red indicator here saying this credential failed, but if you leave the SSH v2 off, it would just say, okay, well, I'm only discovering what SNMP, and you might not see an error. So just keep that in mind. Um, look at your, your uh, results here. I see success, so I'm good to go. I am going to just go ahead and execute this on demand by doing the discover. Okay, at this point, the, uh, it has actually already completed the discovery portion, and now it's on to some post-discovery tasks. You notice that it's doing a, um, all sorts of things in here uh, regarding this device, collecting information generally through the SNMP. And uh, as I scroll down here, you can see the various things going on. You'll see here there is one error. And maybe there was some problem with uh, setting traps. So what we try to do is set traps on the box so it automatically starts sending traps to, uh, to uh, um, the product. This one happened to fail just because I'm in a, dev in a lab environment and it's unable to do it on this device based on some configuration that's already on the device. So um, those kind of errors you can interrogate. Any of these lines you can hover over and sometimes you can get additional information on that one error here. Um, I'm going to pause this. You'll notice in the button middle here there's some options to pause things. I can come in here and look at what failed um, on this particular um, um, device here. Basically the commands it sent and those kind of things. So this is useful sometimes in troubleshooting. This is generally true throughout the product. And then you can also hide or remove these sorts of things here if you don't want to see certain errors. Um, so that's uh, available for you as well. So generally you don't need to sit here and look at discovery. Um, you could just execute the profile and let it go off and do its thing. Um, uh, here you'll see here we are getting a failure, but again that's due to this one little red line here where the host already existed on the box because I had, I had previously deleted and rediscovered, but it was already configured. So those kind of things can be omitted, even though it said failure, it was successful. Um, we can go now look at our, our device here, I'll do that in just a second. Before I do that, um, I just want to point out now that we have this profile saved in my system, I can come in and re-execute it. Um, this is where you can execute it with a file. So if you have a list of IPs, you simply execute uh, and select the file that you have persisted on your local box. It's just a notepad file with a list of IPs. And it will run those IPs as targets for your profile. That's another way to do it. Um, you can also schedule your profiles if you want to go and you want to scan a subnet periodically and have it pick up everything that's new. Well, that's simply a way to automatically pick those up for you. And then one last, last thing here on troubleshooting, let's say I go back and I wanted to re-execute this. I guess obviously I can come in here and just uh, uh, re-execute it in here. And I will do that just as an example here. I'll do a start inspection. What it'll say is that it's already known because we've discovered it. But typically if you get that little plus sign here and you have an error in a protocol, you can simply just go back to your network and adjust your protocol. Simply select um, or deselect what you want, create a new one, or choose an existing one to add to your list here, and then simply go back and inspect again and, uh, and, and see if that can resolve the issue for you. It may be that you're going back here and you want to reset, uh, maybe it's a timeout error and you want to set the timeout on SNMP, simply come over here and click that little page button and reset your, your, your timeout or your retries and apply that and then reinspect and it will allow you to recheck that device. And then all of those uh, uh, pro uh, um, authentications you put into your profile will also be persisted. Once you get a successful discovery, it will be persisted as a new authentication that you can choose elsewhere if you need to, if you want to create another discovery profile. Keep in mind, though, if you uh, close your uh, profile while you're in the middle of it and you have not saved it, you will, uh, you will lose any information in there. So if you're doing an inspection and going bouncing back and forth, at some point you may save it and then reopen it and reinspect. 
uh, that will allow you to persist your profile with all of the credentials you have on it and then do that inspection at will there so just keep that in mind Okay, I hope that was helpful for you on a basic uh, discovery uh, tutorial. If you have any questions or concerns, just uh, please uh, feel free to visit DoradoSoftware.com.